The question is, does God practice Judaism? We know he does. Does he practice Christianity? No. Why? Because he rests on the seventh day. <laughs> he says, I created the world in six days, and I rest on the... It's my day of rest. So he practices Judaism. So let me, let me explain this a little bit. This guy, this guy named Gerald Schroeder, he, he, he's a, a proponent of creationism to be taught in schools along with evolution. He was on the radio being interviewed, and he said evolution is a limited uh, explanation for the universe because there are certain things in the world that evolution cannot explain. For example, this is the example he gave, human blood has 13 ingredients. If you take the 13 ingredients separately and you, and you combine them one at a time, it will not become, right? They have to come together simultaneously. All 13 have to be there at the same time. They can't evolve. So evolution does not explain how we have human blood. And therefore, creation is a legitimate explanation and it should be taught alongside. So most people called up asking questions about the blood and about other things, and it was a very scientifically uh, advanced conversation. And then some caller sounded like a, like a kid with, with bad grammar. He said, you know, people used to believe in God because of thunder. Like, who else could make a sound like that? Must be God. Then we found out what thunder is. He says, aren't you doing the same thing? You're right. We don't understand how the human blood... Be so that proves there's a God. <laughs> Do a little more research, you'll figure it out. So the fact that you can't explain it proves that there's a God? That's so silly. The fact that you can't explain it simply means you can't explain it. You, you can't draw the conclusion from that that there's a God. The guy was stumped. He didn't know what to say. It's a, it's a really good question. We can't assume that there's a God because we can't explain something in nature. That's a, that's a foolish... It's a foolish approach. So, one of the sages once proved the existence of God by arguing if there was a book, and you asked me, who wrote this book? And I told you that there was a bottle of ink that spilled, and it dried in the shape of these words, sentences, paragraphs. Would you believe me? He said, no. He said, so, the world, nature, is much more complex than a book, and yet you're willing to believe that it happened by accident? So that proves that there's a God. Same problem. Doesn't prove anything. All it shows is that there's something you don't understand. How does that prove anything? But I think that this is the idea he was, the sage was making. If you say, in the beginning there was just a bottle of ink, and how did the book come about? The bottle of ink spilled and dried in the shape of the book. Is that possible? It is. It's possible. You know, but the, if you have a million monkeys typing for a million years, yeah, yeah, it's possible. The question really is, if there is nothing but a bottle of ink, what do you mean it's spilled? <laughs> Why would it spill? There's nothing but a bottle of ink. It's spilled. What, the wind knocked it over? There's no wind. So the question is not, can it write a book? 
The question is, why would it? Why would it spill? Wouldn't you, why do you assume there's anything? Got to, no bottle of ink. Got to start with something. Okay, got to start with bottle of ink is an example of God. No, 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 no. It's not yet. Not yet. If you say, oh, yeah, why? Why? Yeah, why? Why, why would it spill? Well, maybe it wanted to write the book. Oh, you're talking about an original being that wanted? Stop calling him a bottle of ink. It's God. So what makes God... But until you find out there was something before the bottle of ink. Well, maybe. Well good until you find out maybe. But it, the isn't, isn't it... Yeah. Isn't it all kind of... So I think, I think people work their way in history. First, they worshiped the moon. Then they worshiped the sun. They kept moving mm -hmm. until they worshiped God. Right. So yeah, there, there's a progression. So here's the point. What makes God God is his desire. What makes an idol an idol is if you attribute desire to an object, any object. So what's wrong with worshiping the sun? It gives life, keeps the planet going. Why not worship the sun? Because worshiping the sun is attributing to the sun volition, as if the sun gives us life because he's in a good mood. It doesn't. It doesn't have a will. It does have a lot of power. But having power doesn't make you God. What makes you God is having a need. That is a whole new, you know, and that God is lovable. But is, is God really just a standard? In other words, he has a need. We're needed. We act like we're needed. And we fulfill his need. Is that, isn't that a standard? Isn't that a standard? It's not, you can't, it's not a biological thing. It's more of a, it's more of a precept. It's a standard. It's, it's a, it is, it's an is. It just is. But that is, is more real than the table. See, we think God is a concept, which means he's not really real. No, no, no. Whatever God is, he's more real than what he produced. Right, but it's still it's still a mindset. It's still yeah. In other words, the you, own, don't, but you don't sort of um, indiscriminately maintain these beliefs. Right. It's, you have to. You have. It, there's some rationality to it. Yes. Right. In you other words, to, you have to. You have to say. I'm going to take this on faith because no, no, no. Because of mora because of the mor the morality that emanates from it. No, no, no. Before we get to faith, the only approach to something that is not physical is intelligence, because we can't use our senses. When people say, "I don't believe anything unless I can see it or touch it or weigh it," well, then you're not intelligent then you're a hedonist. If you want to perceive reality through your five senses, then you don't need a brain. Animals do that. The reason we have intelligence, or the real purpose of intelligence, is to enable us to, to apprehend things that our senses don't. If your mind can't take you beyond your senses, you're just an animal. So the mind enables us to reach a truth that the senses cannot. Because what you can't touch is more real than what you can touch. Give me an example. E equals MC square is more real than the bomb that it produces. Because yeah. the principle is real. From that principle, you can produce a bomb. So the abstract comes before. The theory is always before the, the, uh, so the, the so product. It's, so it's, so it's, a, it's a theory. It's a belief system. No, it's something that we can approach only through intelligence. Right. 
Not, not through our senses. Prove the theory? Or yes. The manifestation of the theory? Yes, it proves, it proves the theory. But what it proves that the theory is true. <laughs> so, so let me give a quick example. The, the Torah says God's arm, God's eye, God's mouth. Right? It's full of these. Right. And we assume that when the Torah says God's arm, he doesn't have an arm. God's eye, he doesn't have an eye. But the truth is the opposite. I have an example of my granddaughter is crying because the doll's arm came off. So I said to her, Ooh, that must have been painful. So she starts to laugh. Says, it wasn't painful. I said, how could it not be painful? The arm came off. She said, it's not a real arm. We call it an arm, but it's not a real arm. Why? Because it doesn't have muscle and bone and, 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 and uh, nerve endings. But wait a minute. If you have an object made out of bone with muscle and nerves, that makes it a real arm? It doesn't. A real arm can split a sea. God has a real arm, a true arm. So when the Torah says God's arm, yes, literally, God's arm. You mean like mine? <laughs> no, because yours is the metaphor. We are created in his image, not the other way around. So when the Torah says God's arm, don't think it's like yours. His is real. The best example is speech. Does God really speak? Humans speak, which is already a problem. How do we have talents he doesn't have? <laughs> Where did we get them from? So that whole assumption is like backwards, right? But who really speaks? God said, let there be light. And there was light. That's talking. <laughs> you say, let there be light and see what happens. <laughs> Nothing. So who really talks? So we have this assumption that everything physical is real. If I can touch it, it's real. If I can't touch it, it's not real. But that's without intelligence. Science which is also not divine wisdom, but science, at the, very, at the very least, has revealed the truth that what you see is not accurate. Look under the microscope. Different story. This looks solid, feels solid. It's not. It's a bunch of electrons flying around. So what our eyes tell us, what our, what our senses tell us, not true. The intangible is more real than the tangible because the intangible came first. So when we're talking about God, we're not talking about a, a principle, a concept, a faith. Drop that. That's religious talk. Liberate God from religion. Do him a favor. Because I know one thing for sure, he is not religious. <laughs> so somebody asked me recently, is God Jewish? So you have to have a Jewish mother to be Jewish, so is God Jewish? <laughs> Strange question, huh? So it's an interesting it's an interesting it's actually a very interesting question. So of course he's not Jewish. Beyond Jewish. Is it beyond Jewish? Yeah. Yes. I guess. Well, if it's, I mean, different religions believe in God, so how can God just one be or the other? The question is does God practice Judaism? Yeah, he does. We know he does. Does he practice Christianity? No. Why? Because he rests on the seventh day. <laughs> Right? He, say, he says, I create, 
He says, I created the world in six days and I rest on the, it's my day of rest. So he practices Judaism. Yeah, At least that one mitzvah we know for sure. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, with us. Just like we consecrate ourselves to him, he's consecrated so that's our <laughs> yeah. so two ways. That? It's got to be so two. If God is, if God is a God. thing, then what is the expression of God's will, which is, or maybe, it's, what, what, are, what is the Torah? What is the Torah? His wish list. His wishes. So God is... If you enjoyed this conversation or this topic, and you're looking for more information, or you want to hear it again from another angle, there is a way to do that. And that is... In this book. It's all there. Order it from Amazon. You can read it, reread it, and share it.